Welcome to Jay Hart Model Works. In this episode on the 1940 Ford pickup by Ravel, we're going to knock out the engine, the chassis and suspension, and even custom build the exhaust. Welcome to my workbench. Let's get started. Okay, you guys know the routine. Cut off all the parts, clean them up with our sanders. The front crossmember has three ejector pin marks on the front and it has a huge sink on one of the sides. We're going to go ahead and fill that with some CA glue. I'm going to spread that out so it's nice and even. Then we're going to take some InstaSet to set that. And then we're going to send it off flat with a 400 grit UMP thinny stick. Once we're done with the ejector pin marks, we're going to do the same thing to fill this deep sink underneath this axle. Next thing we want to do is glue our engine halves together with some Tamiya Extra Thin. While that dries, we're going to go ahead and we're going to work on the valve covers. Now I'm just using a flat chisel blade and we're just going to remove these knobs where the spark plugs should be. I'm going to use a sharp pointy tool called the jewelry awl to poke pilot holes so that we can then drill out the spark plug holes. We're going to drill these out to 0.8 millimeters, which is much larger than our spark plug wire, but you'll see where we're going with that later. Okay, now we're going to modify the intake manifold. I want this cap a little bit lower. It just looks a little bit better to me. So I'm just going to cut the cap off. I'm going to cut a bit of the stem out, and then I'm just going to glue the cap right back on. This is going to make it fit better when we go to customize the carburetors and the air cleaners. Speaking of the air cleaners, I picked these up from off the sprue. These are billet aluminum, and they have this gorgeous mesh air cleaner material in them. These are going to be fantastic. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to take our saw blade hobby knife and we're going to cut right at the base of the air cleaner. And that was a pain, so I got lazy and just used my display nippers to remove the other two. Because those won't be perfectly even, I'm going to go ahead and use a sanding stick to make sure that they're all nice and flat. Then we're going to use that all again and we're going to punch holes in the very top of the carbs so that we can drill out for the new air cleaners. You really want to get these as centered as possible in the top of the carburetor. You don't want your air cleaners to be sitting off to the side. We really want to make sure everything lines up nicely. Now we're going to cut the bottom of the carbs off the sprue and we want to make sure that everything is nice and flat and that all three of these sit at the exact same height. The custom air cleaners are 6mm instead of 4. They're slightly too big and they cause the part to bow. We're going to fix this by cutting the air cleaners apart. Then we're going to use our nippers to remove all the excess plastic that shouldn't really be between the, the individual carbs and then clean everything up as neatly as possible so that we can custom mount these. The base of the carbs is rectangular. We need to make certain our pilot holes is dead center so that all three carbs line up evenly when we mount them in place. Once so we have our pilot hole, we're just going to drill these with a 0.7 millimeter drill bit. Here, I'm going to glue in some number 500 KNS piano wire. You can use any wire you have. We just want to make a pin so that it seats firmly when we go to mount these to the intake manifold. When we cut these, we want to cut them really close. Just leave just enough so that we can use it as a pin. 
Now for this, I'm going to dip the metal pin into a little bit of black paint, and I'm going to tap it right on the intake manifold where I want it, and that's going to be my mark for where I need to drill my hole. And we'll repeat that for the other two, and all three will be done. When we go to glue them in, we'll make sure that they sit nice and straight. The exhaust headers on this engine are absolutely terrible. They're molded into the block. I've never made my own, so I decided to use my engraving tool to deepen the space between the header and the block. I went all the way around the header to try and give the illusion of it being a separate piece. I'm also going to paint it a separate color. It's not vastly different, but I tried to at least give it some semblance of it being separate. There really isn't a purpose for using the panel liner right now other than to kind of show you guys better the work I did. We are going to majorly overhaul the exhaust on this kit, starting with removing this exhaust out bit here. There's no part that connects the engine to the actual exhaust that's in the kit, and we're removing that exhaust anyhow. So we're going to just use our hobby blade to get that out of here. And our sander will clean that up. Now the way this kit is done, there's one exhaust out and then there's a U-tube that goes from one header to the other that connects them. I'm going to cut the headers away from this U-shaped chunk of plastic that is supposed to represent a pipe connecting the two headers. Then I'm going to remove this U-shaped chunk of plastic that's molded to the engine block. I'm going to start with a hobby knife and the hobby saw blade. But eventually I'm going to get tired of this and I'm just going to use the display nippers to cut it all off. Then I'm going to use a Dremel tool with a grinding bit to clean it all up. All right, now that that's all gone, we're going to drill a hole in the bottom of both of the headers to fit some 12 gauge jewelry wire. We want to mark our wire here and make a 90 degree bend coming off the bottom of the header. I picked up some really nice mufflers from Mr. Model and we're going to hold one in place and mark on the frame where we want to drill for our pipes. Once we have our marks we want to drill the front of the frame up by the engine bay. Now we want to stub our exhaust up and we're going to make a couple of marks for a bend up here and a cut just past where we exit the frame. We're going to put a slight S bend using the first two marks to bring it in towards our chassis. And we're going to cut it off at our last mark past the frame. Now we start by working the wire through the frame first and then push the other end into the header for a test fit. Do not glue any of this. We want to be able to take it all apart later. And we are going to need a few tweaks here and there. And now we want to test fit our muffler. Okay, drilling the frame at the back of the muffler is a little harder as it's on an angle. 
I'm going to drill the best I can on the angle and then use a round file to widen the hole and straighten it so that the wire can pass straight through to the frame into the muffler. It takes a while to straighten out, so we're going to jump ahead right about here. Now we're going to run the wire into the back of the muffler, and we're going to put another S-bend just to bring the wire into the frame. Then we'll add some bends manually to the wire so that it follows along the curve of the frame. This takes a few bends and a bit of trial and error. We also want to make sure that we clear the rear axle and suspension, and then we'll cut the wire off, leaving it long past the end of the truck. And that's side one done. Before we can make the other side, we need to remove the existing molded-in single exhaust. We're going to cut the muffler bit off with our saw blade or hobby knife, and we're going to clean everything up with a sanding stick. Then using our hobby knife, we're going to carefully carve away the exhaust pipe where it flows along the frame. But be careful, we want to leave this one little small bit that has a mount point for the chassis on the top side of the frame. Don't cut that off. With that gone, we're going to use a chisel to remove the molded in pipe on this solid bit. If you don't have a chisel, you can try a hobby knife, but you may want to just leave it and hope it's not that noticeable. You can pick up entire sets of chisels pretty cheap on like 10, maybe 15 bucks on Amazon. We also want to carve out the pipe back here where it runs by the gas tank. Again, we're going to do that using our chisel. From there we want to repeat the process from side one and here's our custom exhaust. Now the jewelry wire is far too shiny so we're going to take all this apart, sand it down, give it some black primer and some Alclad stainless steel. Everything's been painted up and it's time to start assembling. Using some CA glue we're going to start with the intake manifold and we're just going to glue this in place. And next we're going to glue in our valve covers. These are sided. The pins will only let you glue it in one way, but the pins are not a good glue point. I went with putting glue on the ends. It really held a lot better. Also, there are notches at the top where the radiator pipes go. You have to make sure that those go on the top. Next, we're going to glue on our belts. If there's one thing I cannot stand, it's an alternator that's just floating up into space. I have this detail set from like Detail Masters, I think, that has some brackets. I'm just going to cut one of these photo etch brackets off, put some glue on both ends. And the way I do this is I put one end up on the alternator pulley and the other one down on the engine block. This way, when I glue the alternator on, it'll sandwich around that bracket and hold it firmly in place. No more floating alternator or generator or whatever this is.
We're just going to pop our fan on here real quick. And I hit the tops of the air cleaners with some of the clear green we used on the body. I think it comes out perfect. We'll just pop some glue on the top of the carbs and carefully push our air cleaners into place. Then we want to add some glue to the metal pins that we added to the carburetors and we can set each one of the carbs in place. We want to make sure that every one of them sits straight up and down. We want them to go straight front to back. We want to make sure that all of them have the little box pointing the same direction. Everything needs to be as straight as possible and as neat as possible since we split these up. And that is the base assembly for our engine. Alright, spark plug wire time. We're going with some ProTech spark plug wire boots and the yellow spark plug wire. We're also going to use some 0.75 millimeter plastic rod. Now I'm going to start by cutting one of these plastic boots into three equal sections. That's going to give us three boots. I'm going to add some glue to our wire and glue the boot onto the end. Now we're not going to go straight to the engine yet. On the actual flathead, you can see the top of the spark plug. So we're going to glue on some of this 0.75 millimeter white plastic. We're then going to cut it off, and now we have the top of our spark plug. Now we're just going to add a little bit of glue and push that into place. Make sure we leave a little bit standing up. And then we can run our spark plug wire under the belt and glue it down to the distributor. I'm going to repeat that for the other seven plugs, and it gives us just a little bit of extra detail with very little extra effort. Now that the engine is completely assembled, we're going to go ahead and glue this into the frame. There's two mount points at the back and one in the front. We're going to take our exhaust that's all painted up. We're going to work this into the frame first again. Add some glue to the front where it goes into the manifold and glue that into the engine. I'll repeat that process for the other side. Before we go any further with the exhaust, I do want to go ahead and knock out the front suspension. We do need to glue the four links onto the sides. It's really weird having a four link suspension on the front end. Uh, once you get the four links on the side, you want to put some glue on the top of the leaf spring. And we're going to also put some glue on these ends of the four links and we're going to press everything in place. Make sure everything's seated and straight and lined up. And then make sure everything's pressed home. Again, keep everything straight and even. Then we'll just hit it with a little bit of Instaset to lock everything down. Back to the exhaust, we're going to put some glue on the tips of the pipes and add our mufflers on. And before that has a chance to set, we want to add some glue to the back pipe, wiggle that in through our hole, get it lined up into the other end of the muffler so everything is straight and even. Then add some glue and press the pipe to the side of the frame and then hit some Instaset to glue that in place. Again, we'll repeat that for the other side. Glue on our muffler, add in our back end. This one wanted to fight me. Finally got it, glue it into the frame. And set it in place. 
And I forgot to add the front tie bar, so we're going to go ahead and get that glued in now. I'm going to add in the rear suspension. I have to admit, I was a bit let down by this. There should have been a leaf spring. In my opinion, there should have been a couple of shocks. This should have been a bit more complex than just one part that glues into place. You want to get some glue on the front, and then glue on all three of the points in the back. Then glue it into place and make sure that everything is sitting straight and level. I forgot to paint this little bit of detail in the gas tank, so I just hit it with a silver sharpie. Now we're going to work on the radiator. And we're going to start by gluing in the pipes. And then we're going to sit everything in place, but not glued in place, just to make sure that they sit correctly. And then we'll leave them there so that the glue sets and everything will be in the right place. Then we can add glue to our four mount points and glue it onto the frame. I'm really liking the copper and green. To finish off the radiator, we're going to add one of these radiator caps from Small Great Detail. No typical photo edge, just add a little bit of glue to the top here, and then carefully place our photo etch into the glue. And there we have it. Our frame, and suspension, and engine is all complete. We did leave these a little bit long on the ends of the tips. Actually, it's a lot bit long. When we actually do final assembly, I'm going to cut these down and add some custom tips on there. When you glue the four links on, make sure that you glue them so that they don't stick up past the frame, as the frame needs to butt up against the chassis. All in all, I think it looks really good. Everything came together really well. Other than a couple of places, everything has pretty good fit and everything seats fairly positively, I'm pretty happy with it. Next step, we're going to go ahead and work on the interior, which means we also need to work on the cab, get the firewall put into place, and we're going to have to work on those doors. So the next episode, we should be seeing how those fit and how those work and if they're a gimmick or not. Fingers crossed, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. You guys are the reason I make these, and I appreciate every single one of my subscribers and viewers greatly. So for now, have a great weekend. Keep modeling, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also, feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comments section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comments section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.